Welcome everyone. My name is Peter Smoten and I'm the Director of the Centre for Doctoral Training in Compound Semiconductors. Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about our PhD level opportunities. I'll start by explaining why compound semiconductors are so important. I'll go on to tell you a little bit about the subjects you'll need to understand and I'll tell you about the interdisciplinary and very practical approach we take to this. I'll mention why a CDT is the very best way to do a PhD, particularly in this subject. And I'll tell you a little bit about the structure of our CDT and essentially what you will do. And I'll finish by telling you about the four partner universities that support and make up this uh, CDT. I guess everyone has heard about silicon, the semiconductor that drove many of the advances of the 20th century. Well, compound semiconductors are similar, but they do many more things than silicon, and usually they do them a lot better. And so there's a whole set of new capabilities that allow us to do so much more. This slide explains two things. The first is the manufacturing supply chain. At the center is the wafer in this picture, and that's essentially the atom by atom growth to form what is called an epitaxial crystal or wafer, much more complex than would be the case for silicon. But it forms the basis of this manufacturing supply chain that then goes on with further processes. And the first one of those is the so-called 3D structuring of that wafer to create integrated circuits or chips. Then components are packaged into subsystems and then the systems that support the applications that you see around the outside. You see, for example, communications represented by the smartphone. And of course, that's now essential for everybody's normal life. On the other side, there's the symbol representing automotive applications. There are medical applications and pretty much around here, everything that supports the way we currently live. For a PhD though, the picture also represents something that's probably more important. And that is that these applications are the key areas that the UK government and its research funders actually see as being the critical areas to do research on in the next five to 10 years. The next slide shows this manufacturing supply chain, perhaps in a slightly different way. Now in South Wales, we have a manufacturing supply chain for across this whole area. For example, along the bottom, we have the logos for IQE, the biggest manufacturer of compound semiconductor epitaxial wafers in the world. We have Newport Wafer Fab, which is the largest UK uh, 3D structuring or fabrication facility in the UK. And we have Microchip, which is a large scale packager of those compound semiconductor chips. At the top, we have relatively small scale manufacturing, first of all at CSC, a joint venture between Cardiff University and IQE. We have the Institute of Compound Semiconductors, which does 3D structuring at, at Cardiff University. And then we have the Compound Semiconductor Applications Catapult that does things like packaging and evaluation modules and subsystems. And so we've got a large scale manufacturing supply chain. We've got a small scale manufacturing supply chain. And what we want to then add is the research that covers this entire range. And what that means is anybody producing some very exciting research can immediately transfer to small scale manufacture and then if successful to large scale manufacture. This is important in terms of the CDT because we're talking about innovation in a PhD. And unlike a traditional PhD, where you would focus on one particular topic area along the supply chain, and you wouldn't necessarily know much about another topic area, with a CDT, learn about this entire manufacturing supply chain and then specialise in your second to fourth year in one or two particular areas. This means that you can understand how innovation in the supply chain can feed through to a better application. This understanding will help you make science and manufacturing better, but also give you an advantage throughout the rest of your career. 
Remember your colleagues in this CDT cohort will be specializing in, in potentially different bits of the supply chain. So you will be kept abreast of everything that's going on and you will see the whole picture. So I've started to talk about what we're achieving with the CDT. Here are some of our other aims. We certainly want to develop you as PhD graduates that are equipped with all of the multi and interdisciplinary skills in this highly research active area that allow you to go on and satisfy your personal ambitions. We also want to change the face of how compound semiconductor research is done in the UK by training you, the new generation, to have an understanding of this entire manufacturing supply chain. And then finally, we want to pioneer some really novel integrated functionality, such as for applications in data processing. Let's go on to the structure of the CDT and how the programme works across four years. The first year is based in Cardiff University and devoted to MSc activities complemented with uh, specific CDT activities. And that includes hands-on practical training device fabrication. We have a training clean room devoted to CDT students where you can try out all of the practical skills and have the chance to make mistakes because let's face it, people learn from mistakes but you want to make them in a friendly environment where you don't feel awkward about making those mistakes. We also obviously have lectures, including guest lectures from our industry colleagues that will help you understand that full manufacturing and research supply chain. And we also have site visits to some of those industrial partners. During year one, you also select and develop a research project in partnership with academic and industrial supervisors, and with training in, for example, project management. Years two to four are based at one of the four universities that contribute to the CDT. They're all leaders in compound semiconductor manufacturing research, and you'll continue also during that time to do some cohort-based training, something like 15 days a year, and that will include things such as going to conferences as a cohort, so you see all the people that you know well, and also being trained by professionals in topics such as outreach, that is dealing with the public. So let me go on to tell you about the university partners and what they do. The first university is Manchester. These pictures are an example of this manufacturing supply chain. On the left, you see what's called an MBE reactor that does that atom by atom growth to create the epitaxial wafer. Across the top, you see an actual integrated circuit that's been generated and then a, a zoom in of that integrated circuit, which creates, in this case, uh, a very sensitive sen sensor called magnetic fields. And then in the bottom, you see a whole unit, a whole prototype of a measuring system using that magnetic sensor. So Manchester have all the facilities to allow you to do this. University College London. And again, in the left hand corner, you see a system for creating this atom by atom deposition. On the bottom left, you see a picture of what are so called quantum dots. So these are features on the dimension of the electron wavelength that allow us to get some really novel functionality into our compound semiconductors. And then on the right, you actually see a fabricated structure where holes of a very small dimension are drilled into that compound semiconductor again to create some particular device functionality in this case it's a it's a so-called photonic crystal laser sheffield is the third university top right is actually a different type of system for creating this atom by atom growth top left is actually a schematic of a particular type of device Stru structured layers of these compound semiconductors which have been fabricated by the 3D structuring to create particular functionality. What is this functionality? Well, this is one element of the thing you see at, at the bottom, which is actually a display. And what you're seeing in that display is a whole line of pixels illuminated on the left and in the middle, a different line of pixels illuminated. And then on the right, a single uh, pixel illuminated 
These pixels in this display though, in this case, are not just illumination creating a picture. They are also able to transmit data at very high rates. So your display is actually also sending data to you from, from the internet. And then finally, uh, Cardiff and what you can do. And on the top left, we've got a, a large scale wafer, which you can't see too much detail on that, but essentially there is something on this wafer, something like 18,000 devices, and then some test structures to perform particular functionality. In this case, it's the type of Vixel that, that does facial recognition for things like smartphones. However, when you make these things and you make new types of device, you have to measure what you've got. And the bottom left is a characterization setup to do that in a completely automated sense. There's a zoom in in the center of, of what we're looking at. In this case, is it's one of these vertical cavity surface emitting lasers. You can see there's a fiber there to detect the light and there are contacts to drive the thing up to very high frequencies. And then on the right, we've gone to something a little bit different, which is actually some more of this 3D structuring at the top. These are optical components. This is a waveguide. And then at the bottom, we've got a particular type of laser. So these are the capabilities of Cardiff. These are the two cohorts of students, first on the bottom left picture, and then we've got the snapshots of the, the 16 students on our second cohort. So if you're interested in finding out more, search on that web address at the top, and all I can do is encourage you to join us. Thank you.